Welcome to this week's new book releases. We have several intriguing titles this week, even though it is still a bit of a smaller list. There will be timestamps per genre for you to pick your favorite. I'm Morgan, if you haven't been here before, I hope you enjoy it, and let's go ahead and get started. Starting out our week is gonna be a high octane sci-fi adventure that's supposed to be a mix between the Divide series by J.S. Dewey's, not really sure, and Firefly. And his description was immensely funny sounding. There are only three real powers in this spiral, the corporate power of the trust versus the union's labor leverage. Between them, the guild tries to keep everyone's hands above the table. Our main character is branded a guild deserter, but he has accidentally landed a ride on a guild ship, the Ambit. Helmed by an AI with the ship's engineer slash medic, who doesn't see much of a difference between those two careers, and a don't make me shoot you XO, the guild crew of the Ambit is a little uh, different. They're also in over their heads, responding to a distress call from an abandoned planet. They find a mass grave and a live programmer who knows how it all happened. So just even that, there's more to the description, but just even that makes me like, oh, oh, that's good. Oh, I forgot to say the name. This is Cascade Failure by L.M. Sagas. Sagas? Maybe. Also, if this is your first time here, besides the fact that I slipped up and didn't tell you the name, I will have already put the cover picture in probably. I'm going to mispronounce several names, places, so many things. I'm going to mispronounce so many things. From there, we move into YA. Our first one up is more of a contemporary. This is Where Sleeping Girls Lie by Farida Bike. I'm very sorry. I just, I cannot pronounce that. Mm -mm. I would embarrass myself and everyone else trying to pronounce it. Let's see if I can even say the character's last name. Sadie Hewson. Hewson. Not sure about the S's is starting her third year of high school, this time at the prestigious Alfred Noble Academy boarding school after being homeschooled. With rumors swirling around her, Sadie catches the attention of the girls collectively known as the Unholy Trinity, and they bring her into their fold. Between learning more about them, especially Persephone, who Sadie is inexplicably drawn to, and playing catch up with class, Sadie already has so much on her plate, and then a student is found dead. Then a more fantasy-centered one is The Last Blood Carver by Vanessa Lee. Nahika is a blood carver, a cold-hearted, ruthless being who can alter human biology with dish the touch. In the industrial city of Thomas, Thermos, Nahika is not seen as a healer, but a monster that kills for pleasure. And in the city's criminal underbelly, the rarest of monsters are traded for gold. When Nahika is finally caught by the infamous butchers, she's forced to heal the last witness to a high-profile murder. Her only chance to survive lies in a terrible choice, become the dreaded monster the city fears, or risk jeopardizing the future of her kind. The cover is sufficiently beautiful while slightly creepy. Our last one up is going to be The Revenant Games by Margie Fuston. Blood is survival for 17-year-old Bly, who lives in the poverty-stricken human villages called between enemy vampire and witch kingdoms. Most of the time, vampires and witches live in uneasy truce, buying human blood for their food and spells. But for two weeks a year, the ceasefire dissolves, and they hold the Revenant Games. Any human can play the games for either the witches or the vampires. Alongside life-changing riches, the witches will raise one person from the dead for whoever captures the highest ranking vampire. In turn, the vampires offer immortality to whoever captures the most powerful witch. For humans, the games are a ticket out of poverty. We move on into adult fantasy with the conclusion of the Almoxia duology, The Weavers of Almoxia by Hedger Elspy. Is, is the conclusion to the duology, but the first book was The Daughters of Istathar. Set in a wholly new world, but inspired by modern Egyptian history about two young women, Nahal, a spoiled aristocrat used to getting what she wants, and Georgina, maybe, a poor bookshop worker who's used to having nothing, who find they have more in common, particularly in their struggle for the rights of women and their ability to fight for it with forbidden elemental magic. But their problems may seem small in the broader context of the world, as tensions are rising with a neighboring nation that desires to end an end to weaving and weavers. As Nahal and Georgina fight for their rights, the threat of war looms in the background, and the two women find themselves struggling to earn and keep a lasting freedom. From there, we move on to Song of the Huntress by Lucy Holland. It takes place in Britain, 60 AD. Hoping to save her lover, her land, and her people from the Romans, Harla makes a desperate pact with the king of the other world. But years pass unheeded in his realm, and she escapes to find everyone she loved long dead. Cursed to wield his blade, she becomes Lord of the Hunt, and for centuries she rides, leading her mortal warrior warriors and reaping wanderer souls, until the night she meets a woman on a bloody battlefield, a Saxon queen with ice blue eyes. 
Our final fantasy is Crossroads Magic by Tracy Cooper Posey. When did I become such a cliche? I'm divorced, working a crappy job, living on next to nothing, and wondering how it all went wrong. Hayington Crossing looks like a throwback to another time. For such a small place, it's stuffed with full of secrets. The people here are different, including the town's doctor, Benedict Marcus, and Haddington Crossing is way, way too small to host a murder. Then, our romanticy this week is a start of a new series from the author of Shadows and Stars, The Veiled Kingdom by Holly Renee. Playing my father's cruelty, the wicked king who robbed me of the future, I face death in the streets, caught between a rebellion and a tyrant's reign. Captured by those sworn to kill me, the rebels remain blind to my true identity. The missing daughter of a despised king. Faced with an impossible choice, I stand before them and join the rebels or face their blades. Yet Dacre, the son of a ruthless rebellion commander, becomes torn between suspicion and desire that mirrors my own. He allows no one to touch me, tries to protect me, yet threatens me at every turn. I probably said the male main character's name wrong because I just can't figure out how to say that. In our one romance this week is Expiration Dates by Rebecca Serial. Being single is like playing the lottery. There's always a chance that one piece of paper could win it all. Daphne Bell believes the universe has a plan for her. Every time she meets a new man, she receives a slip of paper with his name and a number on it, the exact amount of time they will be together. The papers told her she'd spend three days with Martin in Paris, five weeks with Noah in San Francisco, and three months with Hugo, her ex-boyfriend turned best friend. Daphne has been receiving the numbered papers for over 20 years, always wondering when there might be one without an expiration. Finally, the night of a blind date at her favorite Los Angeles restaurant, there's only a name, Jake. Then our last genre of the week is going to be fiction. This one is a tad historical, lyrical, and maybe horror. This is A Botanical Daughter by Noah Medlock. It is an unusual thing to live in a botanical garden, but Simon and Gregor are an unusual pair of gentlemen. Hidden away in their glass sanctuary from the disapproving title of Victorian London, they are free to follow their own interests without interference. For Simon, this means long hours in the dark basement workshop, working his taxidermical art. Gregor's business is exotic plants, lucrative but harmless enough, until his latest acquisition, a strange fungus which shows signs of intel intellect behind, beyond any plant he's seen, inspires him to attempt a masterwork. True intelligent life from plant matter. That's all for this week. Maybe you found something new to pick up or at least add to your TBR list. If you enjoyed this one, you can check out some of my other videos. And if you're enjoying my stuff, consider subscribing or joining us on Discord to talk about books. I hope you're having an awesome day and finding something great to read.